Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise his name, I'm fixed upon the name of God's redeeming love. Hitherto thy love has blessed me, thou hast drawn. Good evening, guys. Thank you for joining us here tonight. And uh, let me see, let me get this uh, music here. All right, looks like we're all set. And uh, glad you guys are able to join here tonight for our warrior here this evening. And take a moment here and welcome each other as we're getting on. Uh, before we start, as we always do, feel free to go ahead and maybe text out a few guys real quick. All right, let's take about 30 seconds and text out a few other guys and invite them to join in with us here tonight for warrior so let me just give you guys a quick minute as you're welcome each other and as you are uh, taking a couple minutes here to text a few other men and invite them out tell them we're live now and uh, invite them out to uh, warrior tonight's warrior while you're doing that we are going to look at part two of what we did from last month, A Heart to Help, and how warriors have a heart to help. Uh, so we're looking forward to part two tonight. And uh, if you missed the last one, feel free to go back and tune in to that on YouTube. Check that out. Uh, that's available under the playlist Warrior. Um, so check that out. And we talked about um, uh, how, again, how warriors have a heart to help. They have compassion, faith, and then they intervene. And it was based off of Mark chapter two. And we're going to follow up with that Mark chapter two and part two and finish up here tonight. So looking forward to that. All right. Hopefully I gave you guys a little bit of time to maybe send out um, to some others. Uh, join us on Warrior as well. But we're looking forward to digging in tonight. Hope you guys had a good day today on this Monday. There's a lot going on this time of year. It is Christmas time, and we certainly have uh, quite a bit uh, in front of us from Christmas parties to Christmas plays and uh, gifts and uh, decorating. Uh, how about uh, the Christmas cookies, right? We all got some room for some Christmas cookies as well. Um, but uh, so anyway, uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to pray and here in a moment get started again. Welcome, you guys. Again, just a reminder, Warrior, our goal through Warrior and this online study that we do once a month is to encourage, inspire, challenge, and equip uh, each other as men from uh, the Word of God. We've been using Proverbs 28.1 as kind of our theme scripture. The righteous are bold as a lion, and certainly warriors, God's warriors, I pray that we all continue to be bold in our faith and what God has given to us. We set a definition of a warrior as a brave or experienced soldier, brave or experienced soldier. And I pray that God is continuing to give you guys courage along this uh, journey of life that we each and every uh, each every day that we have and that we're continuing to 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 have uh, this, that courage and brave and also growing in the Lord and experienced and, and learning from the Lord and learning from others. And I pray that God is just uh, again. Uh, allowing us to uh, to continue to be be warriors for him. So let's go ahead and pray 
and then we'll get started here tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for your goodness to us. Thank you that we could tune in tonight as men, get into your word, um, and uh, different guys from, from uh, uh, all over. And some will be live, some will be watching this recorded. I pray, God, you'll just use the scriptures tonight to encourage us, inspire us, challenge us uh, to be, again, uh, warriors, your warriors. So I pray, God, that if there's any men that have any specific requests that it might be weighing on their heart right now, could be personal, could be financial. Um, God, it could be uh, within their workplace. I, I pray for them right now. I'm lifting them up to you in prayer. And I pray, God, that you would just be that burden um, bearer, Lord. You desire for us to cast them upon you. And I I'm, I'm, I'm pray that, Lord, as men, that we will cast our cares upon you, our worries upon you, our weights upon you. And I lift them up. You know each one's uh, heart that's watching here tonight. And God, I pray that you would use these scriptures so that they would, again, challenge us, but then also so that we can use them for others as well, whether it's within our home, um, with our spouses, children, grandkids, friends, uh, co-workers. Pray, God, that you'll just use it tonight. And that's what we ask for in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So before we get started, I want to ask you guys a question. What is your favorite uh, thing about this time of year, Christmas time. What is your favorite thing about this time of year here at Christmas time? All right, so put it in the comment section, give you a minute just to do that, and we'll kind of see that. Um, could be something serious. Of course, we know this is the time that we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus, and the most influential and uh, person in the world. And it's great that we get to uh, grow in the Lord. But your favorite thing about Christmas time, go ahead, put it in there. This morning for this morning's Renew, if you're not tuned in to Renew, it's a daily devotional that we have uh, within our church family, and we extend it out to anyone uh, every Monday through Friday at 8.05 in the morning. But we did today's Renew, and I had Colt Maley help me out. And the question was, what is your favorite Christmas song? What is your favorite Christmas song? And Maylee broke out Jingle Bells for us. I was cracking up about that. And uh, also Away in a Manger, too. Um, but uh, we talked about Joy to the World and that hymn, Joy to the World, and just uh, some, some depth and meaning. If you missed that, feel free to go back and watch it. Uh, but you guys are putting in some things here uh, tonight about favorite time, a favorite thing about Christmas time. Also, Christmas Eve, we have our candlelight Christmas Eve service. I want to invite you guys out. Come and join us on that night, seven o'clock. If you have people in visiting from out of town, bring them with you, bring them with you. It's a great night, great family night. Also coming up this Sunday, our children's Christmas program and our school uh, champion Baptist Academy and, and our church uh, kids do a few songs in there as well. Uh, but it will be great. 9.30 on Sunday morning, 10.40, part one, part two, about the greatest story ever told. So we are looking forward to that. It's gonna be great. So join in with us. All right, I see some of you guys put some of those in. I appreciate it. And uh, now let's get into the word here. Part two of A Heart to Help. Again, last month, if you missed part one, go back, check it out. A Heart to Help and Warriors Have a Heart to Help. And certainly, um, it certainly is a great way to be a testimony for the Lord and a testimony is being a warrior for God. So uh, if you missed it, we said uh, warriors uh, that have a heart to help, they have compassion, they have faith and they intervene. So Mark chapter two, if you have your Bible, turn there if you're not already there, but Mark chapter two, I'm not going to read the whole scripture and passage again as we did last month, but this is the text of what we were looking at in regards to a heart to help. And we see in the context of this story, we see Jesus healing a paralyzed man. The great part was, is in this story, we saw that there was four of his friends that came to be able to come beside their friend and bring their friend to Jesus. And I'll tell you what, each and every day, guys, there's no greater goal as God's warriors than to bring other people to Jesus. That should be our, our, our sole purpose and desire. While we have a lot of responsibilities that we need to do, I pray that uh, we will continue to do like Christ. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost, and I pray that that will also be a purpose and a desire for us each and every day. 
And in Mark II, that's what they did. These guys physically knew that they needed to get their friend to Jesus and Jesus through the healing. How did they do it? There were so many people in this house that they had to get them to the roof and they brought them down through the roof. If you guys missed it last week, feel free to read Mark chapter 2, 1 through 12 and uh, check that out. Uh, but these guys um, made it happen. And you know what? As God's warriors, if we're going to have a heart to help, we need to make it happen as well. So I want to now go into part two and wrap this up. Uh, I think coming out of 2021 and going into 2022, this is a great thought for us as men within our house, our own homes, um, with our families, with our spouses, kids, grandkids, and then at work with uh, uh, co-workers in our ministries, with other friends that we might have. Let's be warriors going into 2022 that have a heart to help, that have a heart uh, to be able uh, to help others and watch God use it. Let me give you a few more. So we said warriors have, have a heart to help, compassion, faith, and intervene as these men did. Here's the fourth one that I want to give to you. If we're going to have a heart to help, we need to be persistent, right? We need to have persistence. You know, when you think about uh, this word of persistence, I got a couple notes here. I just wanted to uh, look at here real quick. Uh, the definition for persistence and being persistent is this. It means strongly persuading yourself not to quit, but to push through to the end. And I like that. How many guys are like me and you've had times when you've maybe felt like, man, I just, I, I'm done. I just want to leave. I'm, I, I just want to quit, right? There's probably all been times that we've had that in life or situations or circumstances. But the challenge for us is all to continue to be persistent. And as God's warriors, we can apply this to so many ways. But in this scripture, these guys were persistent, man. You know, there's something that I say a lot of times, and it's an acronym, C-Y-E. Some of you guys maybe heard me say it before. And C-Y-E stands for challenge your excuses. Maybe you want to put that in the comment section. C-Y-E, challenge your excuses. Man, we are good at making excuses on why we can't do something. The thought is this, let's challenge our excuses and, and be persistent. And when God has called us to get something done, to get it done, especially in this area of bringing other people to Christ, right? We have excuses. Oh, nobody, nobody cares. This one doesn't want it. Or I don't know what they're going to think. Or what are they going to say? Hey, listen, when it comes around to, again, like these men in this story needed to, they knew Jesus would heal their sick friend. Listen, they came up to the house and they said there was the, the word in there is the press or so many people were around that they couldn't get them to Jesus. They didn't stop. No, they stayed at it. They were persistent. And I pray that each and every one of us as God's words will continue to be persistent. I don't know how this applies to you, not just getting people to Jesus, but maybe you're discouraged tonight. I don't know. Maybe some of you are watching this live. Some of you recorded. I want to encourage you that with the Lord, he'll help us and help us to continue to stay persistent on what he has called us to do. Again, persistence, it means strongly persuading yourself not to quit, but to push through to the end. I'll tell you what, Jesus did it for us. He did it for us on, on the cross. And uh, I want to give you a scripture, Galatians chapter six, and then I'm going to give you just a couple real quick thoughts in regards to uh, persistence. All right, Galatians chapter six. Some of you have heard this scripture before. I like it, even though I've heard it plenty of times. I've said it plenty, plenty of times. I've shared it with plenty of others. But it says this. It says, and let us not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season, we will reap if we faint not. And what a great reminder for us, guys, to keep pressing on. If we're telling others about the Lord, continue to Look for ways that we can share Christ with others. Many of you know uh, Colt had come up with a little track, a little card. And if you haven't seen it let, yet, you guys send me a, a message and uh, I'll make sure I get you a picture of it. But we've already gotten out about 3,000 at least of these cards. And on the front, it tells a story. My daddy 
uh, a real hero, and it talks about uh, his daddy's last prayer request before he went to be with have to be uh, uh, with the Lord in heaven. And then on the back, it says, "My daddy's last prayer request was for you," and it has a whole salvation message on it. You know, look for ways, guys, that we can share God's word and the hope of Jesus with others. So I don't know what it's going to be for you. Uh, but let's look for ways. And, and as we do that, as that scripture says, let us not be weary in well-doing, right? I've said a statement plenty of times, don't sin in doing right. Let me say it one more time. Do not sin. Let's not sin in doing right. Hey, listen, we can do it. We can be doing something and serving God and going through the motions. But if we're not doing it, Pastor brought a great message last night on heart first and, and doing it with all of our heart. Uh, what we're doing for the Lord. Uh, but we can sin in doing right if we're just going through the motions and not doing it for the Lord with the right motive, maybe doing it for our own, you know, uh, uh, making ourselves look good. No, but ultimately uh, doing uh, and not growing weary and well doing, and let's not sin in doing right. Uh, for in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. So number four, as we mentioned on a warrior and a heart to help, is this idea of being persistent, right? Persistent. I read this statement. It says this, a river cuts through a rock, not because of its power, but its persistence. Wow. Think about that. A river cuts through a rock, not because of its power, but its persistence. So true. And uh, something that all of us uh, continue uh, to, uh, to need to hold on to. So, these guys were persistent. They stayed at it in Mark chapter two. And I pray that we'll all do that same thing. Let's look at the next one. Uh, number five, not only were they persistent, but here's this thought. They were creative. They figured out a way. They made a way to make it happen. These guys were creative. They were persistent. They were creative. As we mentioned, they went up to the roof and, uh, uh, you know, brought him down through the roof. I can't imagine. Could you imagine? <laughs> and as you know, the houses then were way different, right? Who knows what they're made up of straw and this and that. I, I don't even know. But could you imagine being in the house and being a part of all these people with Jesus and seeing and feeling some stuff coming down uh, because uh, these guys were bringing their friend ultimately to Jesus. They were creative. You know, get creative. Get creative on ways that you can share the truth with others. Get creative. Think on some fun, creative ways of what you can do. You know, over this past year, uh, through the pandemic, I heard of, uh, you know, it was funny when we were going through it, especially in the beginning, all the toilet paper deal that was gone. And I heard of one church and somehow they all got together and they brought in a roll of toilet paper and in that roll of toilet paper somehow uh they had like a salvation like gospel message and track and they were handing them out and i said man that's some serious creativity right there right um so anyway look for ways that we can be creative i don't know what might be some creative ways that you guys could come up with especially around this christmas time um, but, uh, think on some creative ways, you know, that deal outside of the box, these guys definitely, definitely were, they dared to do something different, right? Uh, they knew that they needed to get their friend, uh, to Jesus. And, uh, the truth is this, let's collectively come together and look for ways on how we can continue to be creative. You know, let's talk about it real quick. All through the Bible, you want to talk about creativity. How many would say that Jesus was pretty creative? Think about that. He was um, just incredibly creative, especially with his miracles. He used parables. Um, the truth is this, as you think about it and some of the things that he did and some of the miracles, he used a variety of, of approaches, that's for sure, to get his message across, to help solve problems. And uh, listen, again, if it was good enough for Jesus, it should be good enough for us. You know, he healed the blind. And when he healed the blind, many times he used some different methods to be able to do that, right? For some, as we know, he just he just touched their eyes. And that was a method that that uh, that he used and they were made well. And then there was for uh, another uh, man. And some of you know, he he actually got mud and he used mud 
to be able uh, to, to help them get, get well. Another one, uh, he just spoke words and he just, he just spoke it to them. How about this? When Jesus in the miracle of feeding the 5,000 and he had all these people that were gathered to come to hear him uh, speak, he didn't have the disciples go and, you know, go buy some food at the market or whatever. No, you know what he did? He, he came and he multiplied uh, these five loaves and these two fish. I mean, he was the master of being creative and innovative. And as God's warriors, I pray that we will do that as well. I wonder maybe within your family where you might feel like just kind of pressed spiritually. Um, I wonder within your ministry, you might feel pressed spiritually. I wonder within your job or um, a business that you might have and you feel pressed. Ask God to give you wisdom and creative and innovative thoughts uh, that uh, he can use for his honor and his glory. So not only were these guys persistent in Mark chapter two, they were also created. Now, here's the, um, the sixth one. The sixth one is this. They were unified. They were unified. Now, help me out. When you think of the word unity, let's talk about it real quick. Put it in the comment section. What do you think about? When you think of the word unity, and as you guys do that, I'm going to look up a scripture real quick. Uh, but unity, what do you think of when you think of unity? Go ahead, put it in there. Unified, unity. I want to see what you guys have for us um, as I'm looking up the scripture. But unity and the power of unity. Um, I, I remember saying something. I can't remember if, if it was our last warrior or a different time. But, you know, you think about a snowflake. You think about how fragile a snowflake is, right? So, so fragile. But the truth is this. Enough snowflakes that come together have the power to completely shut down traffic. What a thought. And as God's warriors, we need to come together and be unified, unified. So see you guys uh, putting some definitions there of unity in. And that's the challenge for us as God's warriors, you know, that we stay unified. It is crazy to me. We live in a culture that is all about disunity. We live in a culture where everybody's so opinionated and hold on to their opinions, but 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 for whatever reason can't come together. You know, we all can have opinions. God's given us that ability to be able to have them. But within our opinions, let's be unified. And um, uh, God certainly uh, used uh, these men. These men came together and they were unified. You know, could you see it now? Hey, how are we going to get... Amen. Well, I want to take him through the door over top of the people. No, I want to take him and above on the roof. And I want to do this. And no, I don't want to do this. No, no. They came together. They were unified and they figured out a way to be able to get it done. And uh, I think it's uh, I think it's great to be able uh, to be able to uh, see that and uh, to come together in this area of of being able uh, to be able to be unified. They cooperated. Philippians one. And verse 27, it says this, Philippians 1 and verse number 27 says this, it says, only let your conversation be as it become the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or be absent, I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit, in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And what a great scripture that that is when it comes around to unity. Put that in the comment section, striving together, striving together. You know what I've noticed a lot of times is when something personal is going on in our lives, it is easy for us not to turn to God and for us to uh, many times react because we're dealing with stuff, react uh, to other people in the wrong way. So when we feel those things coming on, let's turn to God, ask God what he's trying to teach us through it, um, and be able to uh, not put that out on others, but do some soul reflecting, some self reflecting, spiritual reflecting to see what God is trying to teach us. These guys here, though, they came together 
and they were unified. I think I had a statement here that I liked about uh, this thing of unity. It said this, where there is unity, there is always victory. And I love that thought. Where there is unity, there is always victory. Here's another one. Many of you are familiar with uh, Helen Keller and her story. She said, alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. And I pray as God's words that we will come together, starting again, as we mentioned over and over, with our families, at our workplace, um, with our friends, uh, whatever God has, that we would continue to, uh, to, to work uh, work together. And then lastly, this last one, number seven, number seven, as we conclude on a heart to help. Again, in this study, these guys were persistent. They were creative. They were unified. And lastly, this, they were sacrificial, right? This idea of sacrifice. You know, there is no success without sacrifice. We don't like sacrifice sometimes because it affects us right? It probably gets us uncomfortable. Well, let's talk about it. How many would say that Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice? Think about it. We know that he was the lamb, right? And in the Old Testament, the lamb that was used, uh, um, especially as we think about uh, that lamb being sacrificed and that animal, but that Jesus is um, here, the lamb of God, and, and he was that ultimate sacrifice. You know, spiritually, we would have no success if it wasn't for the sacrifice of what Jesus did for each and every uh, single, single one of us. I want to read this scripture in Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10, and then we'll wrap it up here tonight in regards to a heart to help. But in Mark chapter 10, the scripture uh, says this, let me read it here real quick. It says this, for even the son of man Jesus here came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. And that's what Jesus was about. He was about ministering. Who can you minister to? In yesterday's message, one of the thoughts that came across was that we can be ministers of grace. What a powerful thought. We can be ministers of grace. We can continue to you know, extend grace to people. And uh, I know that we appreciate God's grace in our lives. We appreciate when somebody is gracious to us. And I pray now that we will extend that as well and uh, be gracious to others as well and ministers of grace. But if that's going to happen, it's going to take some sacrifice. It's going to take some focus off of ourselves and to be able to focus on others as well. I gave you that statement uh, on, um, on sacrifice, and I want to give you another one. Sacrifice today and enjoy the benefits tomorrow. Sacrifice today, enjoy the benefits tomorrow. I remember I heard this statement years ago, short-term pain, long-term gain. And there was something my daughter was upset about like a year ago. And uh, I said, Maylee, short-term pain, long-term gain. Of course, she didn't get it. And she was wailing and crying, you know. I can't remember what it was about. But the truth is this, is that uh, what an investment it is when we sacrifice our time and our talent and our treasures as God's warrior, God's warriors to be able, on behalf of others, uh, there's no other greater investment. And I pray that we would give up and, and, and give up some sacrifice, some of the wonderful abilities that God has given to us. Like Roman says, uh, be a living sacrifice, right? That's scriptural. And for us to be a living sacrifice and look for ways that we can continue to have a heart to be able to help. Think about this statement. Kind of leave you with this. The greatest sacrifice is when you sacrifice your own happiness for the sake of someone else. Wow, what a powerful thought. The greatest sacrifice is when you sacrifice your own happiness for the sake of someone else. And certainly, before we get off on that, I'm not saying that you are never happy, right? Blessed. Talked about the blessed life, the happy life. No, that's what we're talking about. But what we are talking about is preferring in honor, like the scripture says, preferring one another, preferring our spouse, preferring our uh, uh, others that we work with, even if they don't deserve it. Yes, Yesterday, as we looked at the message yesterday, forgive one another. 
you know what? Forgiveness, even if they don't deserve it. That's what Jesus did for us. I didn't deserve it, his forgiveness, but he did it anyway. And I pray that we would follow his model along the way in regards to uh, being able to sacrifice and be sacrificial. These guys gave of their time in Mark chapter two. Um, they made it happen and they came together and they sacrificed maybe some of their own desires and wants and things that uh, that they had uh, in front of them, maybe some things that they needed to do and get done. And that's exactly uh, what uh, what they did. And I pray that all of us would continue to be able to do that as well. You know, in that story of Mark chapter two, have you ever wondered maybe who paid for the repairs on that roof? Think about that. I don't know. But I bet you that that group of friends, if they didn't, they probably probably would have been the group of people that maybe would have, have made that happen, right? And uh, so anyway, what, a, what an interesting thought for us to, to think about. And God wants us, just like these men help bring healing to this guy, God wants us to have a heart to help and to bring spiritual healing with people that are without hope. And I pray that we would be God's warriors as we come and we end this year of 2021 going into 2022 and that God would continue to allow us to be able to uh, work together, come together, and that we would be a group of God's men and God's warriors that would ask God for, to help us to be persistent, to help us to be creative, to help us to have unity and to help us to be sacrificial so that we can uh, uh, help a, a, a world that is, is helpless and bring to them the hope of Christ. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to um, uh, pray real quick. And here, as I get ready to um, pray, maybe you guys want to hear here in a minute, put in, what did you learn tonight? What did you learn tonight? Um, and uh, share with us um, what it was in the comment section, what you learned. So let me go ahead and pray. And then we'll put up tonight's takeaways uh, on what it was that uh, that we learned. But again, a heart to help from part one to part two, from last month to this month. Let's have, as God's warriors, let's be guys of compassion. Let's be guys of faith. Let's be guys that help intervene on behalf of others. Let's be guys who are persistent. Let's be guys who are creative, who are unified, and uh, who live a life uh, uh, lives that are sacrificial for others and for the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for allowing us to be together on this warrior tonight. Help us, God, to have a heart like you had, a heart to help, and that we would be known and identified as your warriors who have a desire to be able to help uh, others and send people across our path that we can help give us creative ways that how we can come together like these men came together to be able to help others as well in Jesus name. Amen. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Throw those comments in. What'd you learn? Always love to see uh, what it is that you learned here tonight. And I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your night and looking forward to going into this Christmas season as well. So feel free uh, to again, join us, uh, any of our services again, Wednesday night, we're going over a uh, committed mind, some scripture memory next Sunday. We have the, as I mentioned before, we have the, um, children's Christmas program. Come join us, invite somebody out with you and then Christmas Eve candlelight service. Don't miss it. All right, guys. Hope you have a good night and, uh, look forward to, uh, uh touching base and connecting with you guys again soon. Have a great night. Praise his name.